Well, I figured I'd go ahead and put out a video since it happened in the last couple of days. Um, as you can tell here, with the uh, cheetah, I basically stripped it all the way down. So, um, in the middle of the crash, when it flipped during my last video, it broke every one of these little points loose. So, I went ahead and epoxied them back down. And then I took the center tray out and I went back over top of each one with more epoxy. Now, in doing that, I noticed that the front, right in this area of the motor mount, where they had uh, had it like hooked up from the factory, that had actually pulled loose too. They just had some, you know, some epoxy holding it down in the front. And then they had some carbon fiber in the back. But it was really, really light amount of epoxy. So I went around the edge. They had a piece here that was actually lifted up. That was never really pushed down. Um, then I redid this side too. You can kind of tell. Um, I first used 30 minute epoxy. Let that dry. And then what I actually did, I used some Gorilla Glue. And I just kind of poured it over top of it. And I took a small little acid brush and just kind of brushed it all over it to just make it a little a lot more rigid that was kind of what my hopes was there did the same thing for the stuffing tube mount and then i noticed back here i was getting some grease coming through from the stuffing tube so i went ahead and put some more epoxy there same over here now went ahead and took the motors out just because it was going to make things a lot simpler to work on one of the frustrating things is with this is the weird drive system. So you have these long struts, right? So, so this is essentially how the strut is. But what, what I didn't know, I've never had a boat like this, was the shaft that's inside that tube is actually like so. And it takes a square drived flex cable. Well, here is the flex cable right here. And if we take this and we wipe the end off of it, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, let's see if I can get you to focus. So you see right here on the end, only about a half of an inch. It started to already round over. Yeah, so it was a pain in the butt to grease these things because you have to take all of your whole assembly off. And you're losing your adjustments, you're losing your setup, all of that just degrees your cable <clears throat> and just degrees your hard shaft. So what I'm doing now on OSE, they didn't have the regular side cable, but they did have the reverse side cable. So I bought the reverse cable here and I basically had this one this cable here from zip kits for like 17 bucks so i went ahead and <clears throat> i just cut it down now if we hold them side by side the threads on one are just a little bit longer but that shouldn't matter and i've got them both cut pretty much the same length this is the one that i cut and it looks like maybe i could cut off a sixteenth of an inch more but you can't add any um, so I went ahead and just made it just a smidge longer. And then the threads on the zip kit one are a little bit th uh, longer too. And then I basically had to um, figure out where the drive dog was and put a spot on that one for the drive dog. So they both pretty much line up. So hopefully when I go to slip them in, everything will be, you know, copacetic. Uh, let's see. Now... So I, that's, that's what I've been working on as far as the cheetah goes. I'll actually have that done here in about an hour. It won't take me about an hour to put this thing back together. Um, just kind of wanted to show you what I'm doing with it. Um, that way when we take it back out to the water, you'll have an understanding of what I've done. Now as far as the impulse, the last video for the impulse, um, when the big six cell battery flew forward, it broke loose that 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 tray in the front okay so let's see if we can get down in here let's see if i can show you so i filled the front of the boat up with foam like a whole lot of foam i filled it up nice tight nice and even and i went ahead and put that tray i pushed it up against the foam 
And then I went and did 30 minute epoxy, let that set up, and then I went back over top of it with some epoxy and some carbon fiber uh, mixture, as you can see there. So hopefully that will add some strength to the hull and give me that little bit of a brace. And it's actually further forward. You can see where it used to be. It used to be right here at the base, like right there. And then now it's about an inch forward. Now, the reason for this is, and a crazy thing that I didn't know, Actually, I learned this not too long ago. So SMC batteries. So I just bought these because they had them on the website. 11,300 milliamp, three cells. And I bought two of them. And they're really big. They're about the size of the 4S 6200 SRD pack. They're almost identical to that pack. So we come over here, we look. We have the 6200 4S pack, and this is an 11,300 3S pack. So we hold them side by side, and they're they're dang on like this one may be just a smidge longer, but as far as weight goes, pretty much similar weight. This one may be just a smidge heavier, but we're not going to be running um, 8S on this boat. This is strictly going to be a 6S boat. So if you look at the SMC website and you look at power factor, that's why I've always gotten a higher speed out of my big 8200 milliamp battery because the power factor was at 404. I, I assume that's 4.04 volts under load. This battery here is like four volts under load. And then this one here, because the milliamps are so high, it ends up being like 4.06 under load and I know that doesn't seem like a lot and maybe I'm wrong as far as what they're considering what power factor is but it does have a, a difference it does have a difference so I've yet to stick the batteries in the boat just to see if they fit seems like they do um, I was kind of curious but you know for like 50 bucks the batteries were I don't know 45 percent off I just couldn't pass up the deal and I've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for SMC to actually get some batteries in stock and can't, couldn't wait any longer. Um, so I just decided to the heck with it. Let me just buy something just to try it. I've yet, I've never bought a battery that's 11,000 milliamp. That's huge. Um, so hopefully I can achieve some really high speeds running these uh you know twins on 6s because this the way the boat was designed to hold batteries every time i crash it with a six cell the battery goes flying forward so now i can strap it in maybe by adding a little bit more nose weight because the batteries are so long i'll get a little bit more front weight distribution and then i'll be able to actually raise the rear trim tab up instead of compensating for it in the rear I'll actually be compensating for it up here with more nose weight. That's just my theory. I may be wrong, but we're going to test that out the next time we go run this boat. I'll run this 50, the 6500s, and then we'll run the 11300s. And as far as the Cheetah goes, we know we got 77 miles an hour on the little... 4400 milliamp 6s packs right so what i had ordered prior to being sent those free 6s batteries i had ordered these so these are 5s these are z's got them on ebay and i wanted to run that boat on twin 5s packs that was my initial plan because i did the dimensions and I wanted to make sure that whatever I ran would fit down in the gully here. So down in the sponson, I wanted to make sure that this pack would clear, okay, to where I can actually stick it in here and I can hook it up. I can put some jam foam in there and then maybe some Velcro or however I want to do it. But I had to make sure the battery would fit because running them up here, I believe, is detrimental to that tray anytime you get a crash and now instead of the battery stopping like here now it theoretically is starting at that point it's giving me more nose weight which i think this boat actually is going to appreciate if i'm going to get it to go any any faster um 
So we're going to be trying to run some twin 5S packs on this thing just to see. Just to see. I don't ever see many people run 5S, so I wanted to try to be, you know, a little different, see what I can achieve. If we can get 65 out of some 5S packs, that would be cool. That would be cool. But yeah, it's uh my table is absolute nightmare. Um it's just, you know, part of the hobby. But I've been working on a little bit of this and a little bit of that over the last couple of days and haven't made any content for you. So I wanted to kind of give you an update and show you what we've got going on here. And, um, yeah, I don't really know as far as the boat goes how long it is set. I feel like old epoxy tends to like to break loose. Or maybe they just didn't use enough. But another thing that I did, I went ahead and I got the new TFL rudder. So now we've got dual intake. We've got dual discharge to where we can cool both sides. I went ahead and put my little through hole here. And I've got the original one here. So we should be good to go there. And um, that way I don't have to worry about cooling as bad. Because I was really, really worried about the cooling when this, this was the original setup. That's kind of like really, really, really restrictive. They could have even put a medium sized one in there instead of one of these small little Ys. But... Hmm. Man. Okay. Well, that's going to be it. Just wanted to give you all an update. So make sure you get a video a thumbs up. I'm not going to edit this. Just going to post it raw. So hope you all watch it to the end. See you all on the lake. Peace.